Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're working on a KitchenAid. This is uh, this was sent in by Isabel for some service and maintenance, and this is a model KSM5. KSM5. Uh, lift arm model, as you can see. Lift arm actually seems to work pretty well on it. And let's go ahead and plug it in and see what the mixer sounds like. Okay, so the mixer itself does nothing. Looking at the cap back here, it looks like this has been taken off. Um, you guys in view here, let us get you a little close up. Looks like that cap has been taken off. Somebody's been trying to, trying to get this working here. Let's see if we can see what's going on. This whole thing's going to come apart anyways because we've got to degrease it and get, the, uh, get some new grease in there and everything. Um, 57 AFI, no idea what that means. But you can see this is a weird, almost like a wrinkle, matte orange finish on there. And that means we're going to have to be real careful with the grease because this matte finish doesn't, doesn't like to clean off all that well. Even though this is a powder coated finish on here and it's scrubbable, uh, we uh, want to try to keep this clean as we can. And you can see there's quite a bit of flour built up in there. And I'm looking to see if something may be disconnected here somehow, or if there just may be an issue with the switch, because sometimes the switches on these like to stick. And I can see the switch right there, and I can't tell if it's stuck or not. Let's see. Okay, so it's not an issue with the switch either. So, what is it an issue with? Well, I'll have to look into it to find out. I'll have to dig a little deeper. Well, I can tell you one thing, it definitely needs brushes. That brushes way far gone. I'm assuming this one's the same way. And this brush cap is really on there. Oh yeah, that brush is pretty far gone as well. Um, let's see. These got to go a certain way, and I just want to pop them back in temporarily. Just to see if we can get a little fire out of this thing. Not literal fire, but get it to fire up. So that one's in the right way, that means this one must go like this. Yep, there we go. Alright. Well, there we go. You can tell, we put a little pressure on our brushes here. It runs, but this doesn't turn at all either. So, and these brushes. It's going to need a gear. The gear is obviously stripped out. Alright, so let's begin tearing her down here. Um, I think we'll disassemble what we can out of the back here first. Start by disconnecting our spring here. disconnect all of our leads. And we'll check our speed control plate well too after we get it cleaned off just to make sure that has no issues. If it does we'll replace that too. 
this looks like a well used machine and does still run um, it would have been running great it would have been running great you know with good brushes in it but there's still that issue of it not turning so that's definitely something that we gotta fix so we're gonna give it the whole the whole shebang we're gonna throw everything at it here for the service and maintenance and you see that's pretty pretty flowered up um, that's the on off contact right there and you don't really have contacts on this speed plate here it's just two little metal prongs alrighty let's take our ground cord wire off here there we go now we can slip our gasket out All right. Now we can get a cord out of here as well. And interestingly enough, I think this cord is supposed to have a different fitting on here. It's got a, uh, a whatever you call these retainers here. I can't remember. It starts with an H. I can't remember the actual name of them. But that doesn't look factory on there. until we get the two halves separated on here um, but in the meantime let me just keep taking parts off of back here there's our governor assembly seeing the pin for the governor all right well I've just looked everywhere and cannot locate the pin that goes in here so I have to replace that pin So we'll have to get it cleaned up really good. Get that lubricated back there. Clean all this carbon and flour out of there. All right. There's all kinds of dirt in there. And we're probably not gonna be able to pull this right out. Nope. All right. So let's change gears here. take up so much room. Alright, so let's start stripping down the front of this. And we gotta take our ring off and then we get our planetary out of here. And that popped right off of there. That was nice. pin is about halfway out already. But it doesn't seem to want to go the rest of the way. idea why this machine is going to put up a fight I think
I don't know why this pin is so stuck in here. Alright, that's as far as it wants to move that way. So let's try this way again. I had it's odd, it'll go in a little bit and then just stop dead. moving now. Just not willingly. Alright. It is just about out. Alright, there it is. No clue why it was stuck in there so hard. Right now, let's see if we can't get our. Uh, get our. Um, well, I'm at lost words now. Get our planetary out of here. Well, she don't move easy, but she's moving. all apart and get this all looped up. Alright, so now let me move some stuff out of the way. I think now we're going to separate the motor from the base so we can work on taking the rest of this apart here. And of course it's not going to be that screwdriver.
This whole thing has been taken apart before. Those screws are loose, these back here are loose that hold the band on. So I think somebody attempted to service this at some point. Let's get our band out of the way. Alright, now we can finish taking this off. Separate that from the base and let's move our base out of the way. I'll put some down here. We can set this on and get you guys a little bit better view. If this is a tilt head, um, you can take it apart without taking this off the stand, but if you're nice to lift on them, it's got to be completely taken off the stand. Because on top of the stand holds these two screws right here, hides, hides these screws, so you have to take it off to see it. This was, at one time, 896 Appliance Fix-It. So, 8 of 1996, this thing was repaired. And here's 20, 22 years later, it's getting fixed again. It's a long time to go between needing repairs, so I guess that says something about the durability of this machine. Now we're going to split these two halves. If they'll comply, get this little O ring out of here. Watch my fingers are getting all greasy here. There we go. All right, and there we have it. And there you can see the problem on that gear right there are completely chewed up. Hopefully I'll show on the camera right there. So that gear has to be replaced. Let's get this gasket out of the way. Interesting enough, there's not there's not a cool, cool amount of grease in here like you usually find. Usually these are just so god full of grease. There's a big gob right here, but it's probably half of what I'm used to seeing in these machines. So probably 96. Grease is probably changed out. And they only put half as much in there. Which I think, you know, it probably doesn't need nearly as much grease as they come in with from the factory anyways. This also doesn't look like the usual KitchenAid grease either. Alright, I'm going to work on 
doing some degreasing on these here and uh, I'll we'll get everything apart and cleaned up and then I'll come back uh, once we get to that point.
Alright, we got this KitchenAid all wrapped up here. We had to uh, replace the brushes in it and also we had to replace the warm drive gear. 
because that was chewed up in that one spot right there pretty good, which is what they're designed to do if something jams it up. It's designed to tear up that gear and save the machine, so we had to put a new one of those in there and put a new gasket in it as well because the original gaskets in these things are just pretty much junk. Um, got everything else lubed up, cleaned up, uh, you know, and it's, um, it's ready to go now. So let's go ahead and uh, turn this on and give it a listen to here. It runs through all the speeds nice and smooth, and uh, yeah, this one's ready to go. It cleaned up pretty nice, too. Um, this powder coat finish on here, you know, it's a wrinkle finish. Uh, you know, it gets dirty easy, but it's uh, pretty scrubbable. I mean, you can really scrub on it, so um, we got it got cleaned up and uh, looking a lot better. So we're going to get this one uh, packed up and on its way back to Isabel, and uh, she'll be able to put it back to use again. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, leave them down below. I'll get back to those as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next one.